Uh, we'll see. A 4 and a 13, just to uh, NCAA tournament fans, sounds better than a 512. And hey, guess what? He just showed up. This is our last one, guys. This is the last Mark, one. Mark, we're, we're live. Are you ready to roll? We're, we're live. Going. We're, we're going. Okay. Hey, all you guys in the studio, <laughs> tons of love. Last game, so grateful for you guys. All four, right? All four? Yep. I'm so grateful for all four of you guys hanging in there with us all season. Coach, you're just talking about what you accomplished. Like Ten I'm going to say this really quick. We're super blessed to have this pregame and postgame show and have you doing this and everybody doing it. I don't know anyone else in the country that has this, and we're really blessed. And Cougar Nation is blessed, so thank you for doing it. Hey, we appreciate the, the shout-out for sure. You accomplished something significant, 10-8 and eight in year one. You are the five seed in Kansas City. How would you sum up what you just wrapped up in the regular season? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, I think we're just excited to keep going. I, I think that's the thing we feel most desperately is like, please let us please let us win because we just want to keep playing together. We want to keep fighting together and growing together. And I think our guys, sometimes you get to this point in the season and you're just beaten, battered and worn down. And I think our guys certainly have some of that. But I think mostly we just want to keep going. And uh, I think we're full of gratitude, actually. Um, you know, who gets to walk into this gym? Like every time we've walked into this gym, it's been spectacular. Even the Houston loss in here was spectacular. And, and um, so we're grateful for that. And we're grateful to have the locker room we have, meaning the, the guys in that locker room. And, and uh, we just want to keep going. I don't know what you said or did again at halftime, but you came out gangbusters like you did against TC. Was it another mosh pit in there? Like what, what happened? So sometimes it are one time only events. Uh, you know, I'll tell you what's great. What, what I'm really, really, one of the things I'm most proud of and it's been very intentional is our guys generally probably the last five or six or seven games. By the time we go meet as a staff for four minutes in the staff locker room, the players meet in their locker room, and then we'll go and we'll have four, meet for four and a half minutes all together where we kind of relay some information and give some instructions. And in the four minutes that our team is in there meeting together, it is an endless stream of conversation and discussion amongst themselves. And by the time I get in there, I really don't have much that they haven't already covered. And that's how... Uh, that's 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 one of the reasons why these guys are accomplishing what they're accomplishing. So it's pretty great, and that's what happens at halftime. Is these guys collect themselves, you know, in in, in there's so much input um, during a first half of a game, in this game and every game, that it wants to drive you human nature kind of within yourself. And our guys fight so hard to like vomit out everything they're seeing, seeing and thinking and feeling and strategizing about and. And that's actually the sound of a good team, and it was certainly in action tonight. A unique scenario where you could see this Oklahoma State team again in your first game on Wednesday in Kansas City, or it could be UCF. What's that challenge like preparing for two potential teams and not knowing until the day before what that's going to be like? Normally, it would be something, but for us, it's actually nothing. You know, we, we, we spent... Um, you know, we spent the last, we, we had these little moments at staff meetings. We meet all day, every day. And where we start prognosticating about seeding and who the opponent could be and whatever. And every single scenario we came up with, we're like, they're so good. <laughs> and it's one of the gifts of the Big 12 is that it doesn't matter who we play because we're going to play a great team. On Wednesday, we're going to play a great team that you look across the court and you're like, how do you beat those guys? It doesn't matter which of the 13 teams it is, right? And, and um, there's something actually calming and therapeutic about that. We're like, you know what? We don't really need to worry because we know we're going to face a great team. We will, we've played everybody in this league, some of them multiple times, and anyone we play is going to be a massive challenge. And I'm actually grateful for that. It's what is what's made this year so special and what makes us so grateful to be in this league. All right, two quick hitters to finish. Does the... The opportunity. You, saw, you guys saw how Spence is trying to say, hey, answer briefly. <laughs> like, he just interjected the quick hitter. Go. I was just told Defus was coming out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so first quick hitter. Does the opportunity maybe to face Texas Tech again and, and get them again, does that drive your guys at all now that you're on that side of the bracket? I think, uh, listen, we'd love to make it to Texas Tech, right? That means we won our first round game. And um, Texas Tech is a great team. They've, they've had an unbelievable season. Uh, they've battled a couple injury issues too. And um, it doesn't, you know, like I said, it doesn't matter. Everybody in this league is so good. Every game is going to be the hardest game we've ever played.
when we'll finish on senior night with Spencer Johnson, yeah. uh, who was a huge part of that second half yeah. surge. Yeah. What did he mean tonight, and what has he meant to your program over the last four years? Yeah, so the, I can't give you a short answer here. Uh, go as long as you like. So I'll go, I'll go fast, though. So. You know, Spencer Johnson comes out of halftime, and, and it's a three-point game at half. And, you know, you're little, everyone's kind of just trying to figure it out as you're in the flow of the game. And we run a, a wide two where we're kind of running a secondary action for Trevin Nell, and he comes off full. And so Spence races off the stagger, ball fakes, and bangs a three. Uh, his defender went under the screen, and it was kind of the first play out. And just like Trev did against TCU, and I, I ran down the sideline just yelling to the guys, like, that's a senior. That's a senior, that's what seniors do. In big moments, they are steadying forces and they just do things like that to make the whole team feel good. I think about Jackson, TC, and Spence, and all four of those guys have taken massively crooked roads to get where they are. But they're like the defining heart and soul of this team because they just refuse to stop. They refuse to quit. They refuse to give up. They refuse to listen to the doubters or the naysayers. They just kept pressing forward and all four three of them now have ended up in a space where they've done something at a national level that nobody thought they could do. And the reason is because they just kept going and kept going and kept going and kept going. Man, what incredible ambassadors of BYU they are. It's awesome. Well said. Congratulations. That's a well-earned Diet Coke you're holding right there. Let's go, Cougs. Love you, Cougs. Let's go. <laughs>